So I'm proud to have uh, with me uh, Bex Williams, who's a WRC commentator, and she's in the slightly warmer climate of Greece. Uh, Bex, uh, thank you very much for joining us. Uh, first of all, I guess it's a well-earned break. Uh, your thoughts on the safari rally? It's definitely a well-earned break, for sure. Uh, it's great to be with you, by the way. Uh, thoughts on the safari rally? It was my first time actually being at the safari rally. I did work on the event back in 2002 when it was last run, but we were working remotely then from a studio in the UK. So I had a bit of a flavour of it from back then, but didn't experience it firsthand until 2021. And I have to say, I was blown away on, on many levels. Uh, the warmth, the hospitality, the incredibly passionate fans there, and you know the, the challenge that the drivers had, and they really rose to and accepted the challenge ahead of them. I, you know, it's been a while since I've seen them all in such a, a positive mode and, and rearing to take on the Safari Rally. Back after 19 years, uh, did it live up to its reputation? I think so. I think it did live up to its reputation. It's, you know, obviously there's there's been many, many changes and the distance obviously was, it was a huge thing. It was over, well, over a thousand kilometres the last time we did it in 2002. And I think many people were wondering whether it really would be the true test, whether it would be a, a good slice of safari action. And there were many doubters, but I think they were all proved wrong on that first day, on the first group of stages when they saw what the drivers had to face. And I think you know, Safari is, is different and we need diversity in the championship. It's a very different event from what we see elsewhere. It is truly unique and that's important. From your point of view, and we could see on your social media posts, uh, it's, it's very different to the other rounds. Uh, seeing the wildlife on the stage, uh, even on the transport stages, uh, how different was it for you, uh, especially coming down uh, to Kenya for it? <laughs> it was very different. It was very different. And I think we were all captivated by by the animals um, because, yeah, I, I mean, at home for me in Wales, there are sheep at the side of the road. There are horses. But, you know, to see giraffes and rhino just wandering around, it was I think it blew everyone's mind personally. Um, and the landscape, I, I don't know, I didn't expect it to be quite so so lush and green as it was as we traveled from Nairobi to Naivasha. It was quite an eye opener and passing through the, the little villages and the small farms and seeing everybody going about their normal day to day lives. So, so very different from what we see. Uh, let's go to the beginning, uh, the shakedown, first of all. Uh, that was very, very scenic. Uh, that really was a taster of things to come. It was. Um, and I'd watched all of the stages online before we got to the rally um, via the wonderful invention of YouTube. So I'd seen, you know, what, what it kind of looked like. But to, to watch the drivers actually there and to get the heli shots and a feeling of the whole landscape around as soon as you saw it you thought wow this is something different and I think as I said there were a few kind of doubters as to you know what it what was it going to be like would it be proper safari as soon as they saw the shakedown stage I think their heads were turned and their minds were changed because you simply just don't see stages like this anywhere else on the championship and that's so important for us to have you need different things having a lot of the same is it's not good for, for the fans at home. It's not good for the drivers. And I think the fact that it was completely unique really did, as I mentioned at the start, it, it spurred the drivers on. It created a bit of a fire inside of them and they were really up for this challenge. Going on to the uh, super special at the Kasarani complex, uh, there was a lot of dust. Um, <laughs> one or two comments that it might not be the scenery that people wanted uh, you had sort of flats behind and things like that um from your perspective how did that compare to say other super special stages you've seen around the world i mean i i've got to be perfectly honest i'm not a huge fan of super special stages because they can be a little bit uh the drivers used to describe them as mickey mouse back in the day as in they were short not much going on not very scenic, but this was a proper super special stage. Like we see in Argentina, they do super special stages very well. Also, you know, it was a proper track. It was a proper challenge. And okay, you did see, you know, the kind of the landscape of Nairobi in the background, it's real life. And I, I like that. I like that the stage was slap bang in the middle of normality. It wasn't 
um, you know, dressed up to be anything other than it was. This is where we were. This is what we saw. And I thought it worked really well. We saw some good action. There was lots of dust, which everybody loves to see. Um, yeah, and it was great. We had some brilliant heli shots, um, tracking the drivers from the start and then moving up and seeing the scenery in the background. I, I think they lo I loved it and I, the drivers loved it. And I think what, what they loved maybe more than the super special was the support from the fans, from the ceremonial start to the super special stage. The amount of fans they encountered, I think was probably more than they expected. They knew rallying was popular in Kenya because of the safari rally and its iconic history, but I don't think they anticipated the level of fans that they would come across. They were all blown away by that, as was I. Going on to Friday, and in one word, uh, could it be said it was carnage? Uh, so much <laughs> drama that happened uh, from Cali Robin Pera beaching is, uh, he was in the lead. Uh, we had, of course, uh, two retirements with Danny Sordo and uh, Elfin Evans, and then, of course, uh, Oliver Solberg going out. Then there's two huge crashes. Uh, there was a lot of concern uh, that it could have been more of a Dakar stage than uh, a rally. Uh, were you concerned at all uh, as a commentator about uh, whether the safari was too difficult at the time? Yeah, I've got to be honest, we did have concerns that we might not have many cars left come the end of the day. Um, but not too concerned as in, uh, you know, this is this is not good concern because we have seen other rallies as well on the European circuit that have high attrition rates as well. Um, it was uh, maybe a little bit unsettling to see so many go so early on and a bit of a shame competition wise that so many failed early on. But, you know, they came back and I think the, the Rovan Perra incident, it was okay not good for him and obviously he'd shown us such incredible pace and it felt like he had mastered how to how to drive on the roads in, in safari until that point that he got beached um, and I thought you know we were expecting big things from him but the other drivers then had the benefit of watching him struggle through that and they knew then what to expect when they went into that stage and they were able to get through it and fortunately for Calais he he couldn't and it was better for him to take the time penalty and not completing the stage rather than go through and complete it and lose 20 minutes. And I think that did affect him then for the rest of the weekend. He didn't have much motivation, which again was a shame because he was loving the safari until that point. A comment about the two crashes, uh, two different circumstances. Uh, you could say with Tej uh, possibly being slightly offline, uh, but more concerning was uh, Martin Prokop and the incident of his uh, his sump guard uh, getting beached in the sand and causing that crash. Mm. Yeah, that was unfortunate. And again, it's not a unique situation. We have seen that happen on previous events. It's it's not alone. Uh, but yeah, for both accidents were were pretty big. Um, with you know not such great com consequences, obviously for for Tej and and Martin Prokop's co-driver who is still undergoing treatment. Um, for his back, although he's he's feeling a lot better now. Um, it's always disappointing to see accidents and you, you absolutely feel for the crews involved, especially when they are serious accidents, but they happen and we see them a lot in rallying. Uh, speaking to Ian Duncan, uh, our rally legend uh, who won the safari mm. in 1994, he's expressed his concern about the safety of the R5s. Uh, there have been a number of crashes involving them here, and then, of course, two involving RFIs in the safari. Uh, he said that he's uh, had a word with Michel Mouton about it, uh, possibly reviewing the safety of it. Uh, would you agree, or is it part of rallying, uh, these crashes? <laughs> to be honest, I see no issue with the safety of, of the R5 on, on any of our events. It is unfortunate that we saw two incidents at the safari event. And I had heard, and I don't know whether you can fill me in on this, that they were considering maybe changing that opening day in the future um, so that we weren't going into those stages. I don't know. But certainly on, on other events, we have no safety issues with the R5. All right. And then, of course, on Saturday, uh, the heavens opened a bit and a new experience for the drivers uh, <laughs> with black cotton soil, which is quite uh, common here. Uh, but that was a new experience for the drivers. 
it was a new experience for us in commentary as well. That was a new phrase we learned, black cotton soil. Um, yeah, I, you know, I, the threat of rain had been there all day, hadn't it? We'd kind of seen the thunder showers around and, and then all of a sudden the skies turned very, very dark indeed. And we thought, will we get some rain? And, you know, as part of our commentary, we're trying to, you know, keep the fans entertained not that it was difficult to keep them entertained at the safari rally but you're kind of building up the threat of rain maybe a bit more than it actually is and then all of a sudden the heavens just opened and some drivers were lucky to escape the rain others not so much so and we saw some serious aquaplaning from the drivers on on stretches where I don't know what happens with the ground there. You described it as that that black cotton soil, whether it just doesn't absorb the water as quickly as it should. Um, but yeah, some major, major incidents and hats off to everyone that actually made it through that stage. And I think, you know, we all saw Thierry Neuville's frustration at the end of it because he thought potentially his lead was lost because, you know, he had serious thunder showers in there. But what he didn't realise is that everyone else was affected as well. But it did turn things on their heads. And I think it, it became an extra challenge on top of everything else. Bex, on Sunday, uh, two things you could talk about. Uh, number one is the reliability, once again, of Hyundai. Uh, third rally in a row they've been leading. Uh, the last two, of course, uh, the previous two with Oit Tanak. And then Thierry Neville, who was the overnight leader on both uh, Friday and Saturday, uh, having to retire. Mm -hmm. Uh, let, let's talk about that, first of all. Uh, your thoughts on Hyundai at the moment? It's tough times for Hyundai at the moment. There's there's absolutely no question about that. Um, you know, they, they're they showing us, both drivers, both, both Oit and Thierry are showing us that they have incredible pace. They have rally winning pace. And Thierry was incredible in Safari. And then he clipped a rock and the suspension broke. And that is what we've seen from from them it, it's been incredible runs but then they have clipped something uh, whether it's been harder than we can actually see from commentary you know we don't get a huge amount of figures of of how heavy the impact was back from the team but it has been an incident where they've clipped something and the suspension has failed which is obviously hugely concerning um, Andrea Adamo did say that nothing has changed with regards to the suspension from previous years and we've been to some tough rallies so I think there are a lot of questions that are being asked right now but it, it's that fine balance between the suspension has failed but the drivers have also in some instances in most in instances they have hit something but it can't happen again <laughs> because we're at that point in the season now where Toyota are starting to run away. They've had four one twos so far this season and they are starting to hurtle away in terms of the manufacturers and the drivers championship as well. So if Hyundai, well, they have to turn it around. Estonia now is Oit Tanak's home event and one which he dominated last year. And you've got to hope for the team that they can deliver a really strong result there. Otherwise, you're starting to question whether his chance in the championship is over. You know, the one good thing about the World Rally Championship is that things can change exceptionally quickly. You can see some teams having a very strong first half of the season, then it turns around and it's another in the second half. So you can never you can never call it at this point in time. Um, but as I said at the start, it's, it's it is tough times for the team. And I think. You would have seen it from the stage end comments from the drivers. They all felt that retirement of Thierry on Sunday morning. And I think they felt it for him because he'd done such a good job, but they also felt it in concern for it's the same thing that's happened again. The second uh, big story from Sunday and really was the story of the rally. Um, Seb Auger was, of course, uh, having to start first and He's, he's not a fan of doing that on Friday, uh, but then, nobody's used to it. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> and particularly the, the Safari Rally, we saw the mistakes that he made on Friday. But then to go mm. through the field and then to eventually take the rally on Sunday was, you know, really a credit to his uh, incredible talent. I think it is. You know, a, a journalist mentioned in our final FIA press conference asked him whether, you know, he considered it luck whether he considered it lucky, which, okay, there's always an element of luck in rallying. You know, you, you wouldn't get anywhere without a little bit of luck. Um, 
but it just shows the nature of his drive and the the intelligence, the maturity of his drive to be able after Friday's disappointment and he clipped a bank, which is potentially where his damper canister went missing um, and he lost a lot of time. He managed to claw his way back, as you said, and it was sensible driving and, you know, thinking ahead and never, ever giving up because Ogier refuses to give up at any point. I remember speaking to him, I interviewed him, I think at the midpoint on Friday, after that morning had gone horribly wrong. And I kind of shrugged my shoulders and said, well, sorry. And he was like, it's a long way to go yet. It's a long way to go yet. And he went and he won the rally. And I think the smile from him and Julian Ingracia right at the end when they crossed the, the flying finish and got to the stop control, that said it all. It had been a tough event. They battled against adversity in losing that time on the first day. But again, they'd come through and taken their maximum 25 points. One of the main stories of the rally was the thousands and thousands of fans uh, that literally flocked uh, to the Rift Valley uh, for this rally. I'm sure you got caught up in the traffic, uh, you know, <laughs> yep. uh, on a number of occasions. Uh, ju just your thoughts on it. Uh, was it a plus or um, we're speaking to Simon Locke and he said it was a huge plus. He didn't mind walking to the hotel on uh, Saturday evening. You know, he, it was a credit yeah. having all these parties around. Uh, your, your thoughts on it? Exactly the same. I mean, we were, we'd had a long day at work and then we got onto the road where the, where the hotel was and boom, we're stuck in traffic and we can see five or six lanes of traffic in what is just, you know, a kind of two-way system. And we sat there for four or five minutes and thought, oh, it's a kilometre to walk to the hotel from here. Maybe it'll start moving. And then it didn't move. And I, out of the corner of my eye, I could glance... Dan Barrett, co-driver to Takamoto Katsuta, walked past. Then Seb Ogier, I thought, what, the Toyota drivers are walking? I'm walking. <laughs> so out we got, and we walked through the traffic. And yes, it, it was because of parties that were happening on, on either side of the road. And everyone was in such good spirits. You know, they were stuck in traffic. No one was angry. No one was annoyed. Um, there were minibuses of people coming back from the stages and they would stop and have a chat and they had little drinks outside the minibus. They were offering us drinks as we were walking past. I think it was, you know, maybe for some people they would have thought, oh, this is frustrating. But I think for most of us, it was just like, well, this is incredible. Look how many people are turning out here to watch the rally. They're having a good time. This is exactly what we want. Um, that's what we wanted to see. We wanted to see people there. And for such a long time right now in COVID times, without spectators on, on rallies. It was really refreshing to see this incredible atmosphere back, to hear the fans, the singing, the screaming, the support for every single driver, regardless of what team they were in. I, it was joyful. It really was joyful. Rex, uh, a few personal questions. Uh, first of all, commentary. Uh, how, how did you get into uh, commentary and uh, rally commentary specifically? Well, I started my rally career back in 1999, um, working for uh, radio stations in the UK. So BBC and independent stations doing just short news reports on uh, local drivers, Colin McRae, Richard Burns, back in the day. And then we formed um, a rally radio station, which was called WRC Live back in 2002. And that was the official station of the championships of the championship, sorry. And I was the lead host on that. So it's kind of really come from back there. I mean, we started all live in 2018 and I started as lead commentator then. And after 17 years of doing radio, it was quite a shock to actually have pictures in front of me because normally it's just the split times you're watching and a tracking map. So you can, you can see where the cars are. And I'd have our fabulous stage end reporters who were giving me information but then all of a sudden, I can see onboard pictures, I can see heli shots, I can see absolutely everything that's going on. And for the first rally that we, we did at Rally Monte Carlo, I didn't want to say anything. I just wanted to sit there and watch it because I thought it was amazing. Um, so, yeah, that's I kind of that's how I got into it. It's been, a, you know, I've been a long time around the sport and doing various things with radio. Um, but television came pretty late on for me in terms of live commentary anyway. Your first uh, WRC uh, commentating, of course, uh, you have uh, worked with the Safari Rally before, but just your thoughts on rallying on the continent, uh, rallying in Africa? 
to be honest, I did quite a bit of research before I, I came to, to see what was happening with regards to rallying in Africa. And I was really pleasantly surprised to see how much activity is going on and how passionate, again, everyone is. And, it, it, you know, <laughs> you only have to look at the results in the safari rally to see on Karai within the WRC, you know, top seven and think, wow, what a, what a talent. And that's obviously born of incredible rallying in Africa and the, the, the process that you will go through to, to find your next champions, which I think is, is pretty incredible. It's hugely competitive there. And I got introduced to a lot of um, local competitors throughout the weekend some of which we couldn't always cover on, on All Live because the stages were so back to back. We were going from one to another with WRC. Um, so it was a shame not to see them all the time, but um, one of our colleagues within WRC produced um, a lovely piece on the rising stars in the junior program within African rallying, which is, is available now online. And it was you know great to hear from those drivers. And I think it was great for everyone to see. One thing I, I loved in the service park during the weekend was um, the teams. So the privateer teams were coming over to have a look at the WRC team servicing and watching the, you know, the, the morning service to see everything that was being done. And then, you know, they go away and they would concentrate on their own services again. But that was that was really nice because everyone's learning all the time. Now, there were new terms that came out uh, during the Safari Rally, uh, obviously from the Dakar Rally, Fesh Fesh. Uh, but then, of course, uh, <laughs> we saw the excitement of the commentators, uh, you and your colleagues. Uh, ALT, animal-like things. <laughs> yeah, See, that's a phrase I had never heard before. But my fellow commentator, Julian, is, is a huge um, animal lover and he's been to Kenya many many times on safari he's been lots of different places around the world and yes he told me about the ALTs and I love that where does that come from <laughs> <laughs> oh, no, it was how absolutely... did you how did you come up with that <laughs> it was just absolutely brilliant to hear it um, from your point of view uh, any highlights that stood out for you uh, during the safari oh there were lots there were lots. I think for me, um, a big highlight were the Saturday stages I thought were incredible. And I would love to see more stages like that in the future. They were so wonderfully open and maybe not as challenging as the drivers actually thought, because initially on the recce, they all told us Saturday was going to be the, the toughest day of all. And it, it OK, we didn't have huge amounts of retirements like we did on the Friday. But I thought from a visual perspective, it was a real slice of, of Kenya and Africa. Whereas on, on Friday, you couldn't see so much of, of the landscape because the, the stages were so tight. They were so technical, twisty in amongst the trees in places, apart from obviously the open sections that you had. But Saturday around the lakes, I thought it was just absolutely beautiful. That was a real highlight for me. Um, obviously seeing the animals was, was a huge highlight, but the biggest thing, that stood out from the whole weekend was was the fans and the enthusiasm for rallying, not just from the fans, but for, from everyone involved in the rally. You know, the, the huge work ethic that had gone on into putting the event together, making sure that it run in very, very difficult times for everyone around the world. There was a real purpose behind it and everyone was buoyed along by that. I think that was my biggest highlight. Oit Tanak saying that he wants the safari to be a bit tougher. Uh, ironically, you're talking about Saturday. Um, he was saying that that was more, you know, equivalent to Easy. some European uh, stages for that. Uh, yeah. He would like a little bit more of a challenge throughout the rally. Um, your, your thoughts on that? Yeah, I mean, that's typical Oit for, for one, you know go to the most challenging event of the year well we'd like a bigger challenge actually um i okay i can see what he mean i mean the saturday stages were visually beautiful um and of course the rain added into the mix for the difficulty level but maybe it wasn't as tough as they expected but like i said on the recce that's what they told us after the recce saturday would be a really tough day and then it ended up not being the case I, I like the, the fesh fesh sections of the stages. I like that challenge and that mix on Friday. Um, yeah, maybe it could be a bit tougher. I mean, I, you know, you don't want to get it so tough that we don't see any car at the, at the end of day one. 
but they do need a challenge and day one certainly was a huge challenge for them this time. The president uh, announcing that the safari rally should continue until uh, 2026. Uh, your, your thoughts, is that good news for the WRC? I think it is good news. Um, as I mentioned before, diversity is important. It is a unique event on the championship calendar and it should be there. And the feedback from the drivers, certainly at the end of the event, I think mirrored what I've just said as well. Everyone wanted to, to see it again, um, tackle, be able to tackle it again. I think you have events on the championship calendar, which every driver wants to win. Classic events like Rally Finland, Everyone wants to, to say that they've, you know, they've tackled one of the fastest challenging events on the calendar. And then Safari, for completely different reasons, would be one to say, this is, you know, this I've achieved this and this is very important to me. I won the Safari rally. And I think if you said that to anyone who didn't understand motorsport, they would go, all right, yeah, no, I know that's a big challenge because the Safari rally has such a, a following and it's so iconic. So many people know about it. Bex, a WRC commentator, you're involved with the WRC. Uh, I'm sure you literally live out of a suitcase. Uh, uh, how, how, what, what's your life like? Uh, did you get to rest much, uh, go back home? Uh, uh, you know, I'm sure you're, you're traveling so much as well. What, what do you do outside of uh, doing your work? Well, normally outside of COVID times, I'm working on other rallies as well. So I normally work in Ireland on the Irish Tarmac Championship. I travel to Rally Barbados every year, which is a two week festival of rallying. Um, it's a lot of motorsport related things um, outside of the WRC still. Um, I used to quite a few years ago, but there's not a lot of time for it now, commentate on other sports like rugby, which is one of my huge passions because I'm from Wales and it's our nation sport. Um, but yeah, with, with all the travel, there's not such a huge amount of time to do other things like that. But um, yeah, we're in Greece at the moment because we are avoiding hotel quarantine <laughs> in the UK. Uh, so we go straight from here to, to Estonia and then home for a little bit before the Ypres rally in August. So there is a little bit of downtime. There will certainly be a week off at some point. Looks like your life is consumed by motorsport. Why, why do you love yeah. motorsport? I think, yeah, I mean, motorsport certainly, but rallying in particular. I've worked in circuit racing. I did a few F1 events early on in my career, but nothing really captured my imagination like rallying does because it's such an incredible challenge for the drivers because they're competing on terrain that changes minute by minute. Uh, weather conditions that change you know they, we don't stop for rain we don't stop for snow and rallying we continue on and I, I like that rough rawness of the competitive edge um, I, I think that really challenges drivers and it also challenges us in our job to be able to to show that to the world and try and communicate what an incredible sport it is there is nothing quite like this in terms of motorsport okay you have your your Dakar rally for sure, that, that's once a year. We're doing this, you know, three, four days, 12, 13 times a year. We used to do 16 events a year, you know, back in the early 2000s. It is a real test. It's a test of everything um, from, from the driver to the engineers behind it, preparing the cars for all these different circumstances that they come across. Finally, uh I know a lot of people were following you uh, and, of course, your commentary uh, from back home here in Kenya. Uh, have you got a message uh, for Kenya? Definitely. Please come back to the rally in your droves next year because we would love to see you all back out on the stages. It was an absolute joy to be there and hear your voices this time around, and we hope that you will be back next time. Bex Williams, a WRC commentator, thank you so much for speaking to us on Motorsport 411. You're welcome.